Okay, today we're going to talk about relativism. We are live in Denver, Colorado, my sister's house. We got mountains. How much you want to bet I can throw football over the mountains over there? It's going to be 100 degrees today here. All right, relativism. <coughs> we'll talk about a couple things. Arguments for, arguments against. All right. What are the what are the three major views? You have ethical nihilism, which says we can't even ask ethical questions. These are just ethics is a joke. It's just not even talked about. Then you have moral objectivism or moral realism. If you believe this view, then you believe there's at least one universal moral virtue, moral rule, um, whatever that people should follow. Um, like do not kill innocent people or do not sell your children into the sex trafficking industry or do not torture your children for fun you should love your children if you think any one of those is a universal moral rule then you believe there's you're a moral realist or moral objectivist okay and there's a third view which is called relativism Sorry about this. Relativists say that there's two types. Morality is relative to either a culture. So 51%, the majority of people in a culture, whatever that is, decide for whatever irrational reason that right and wrong is determined by vote or just opinion. Or it can be relative to individuals. So I have my own moral beliefs. So what's right or wrong for me is different from what's right or wrong um, to the people who live in this house around us. Everybody creates their own morality. Um, <clears throat> and nobody's right, nobody's wrong, everybody's right. Everybody's right. Okay. Now, so there's three views. Ethical nihilism, we can't even talk about ethical questions. But it's very rare that the people are ethical nihilists. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Some worldview considerations might drive you to ethical nihilism. Um, namely, some scientific atheists or philosophical naturalists, aka metaphysical naturalists, they might say that yes, everything is just made of matter and energy. Human beings are just great machines. And they talked about. Ethics is just bizarre. Um, there's, just, there's no properties that exist. And relativism is dumb. Well, I believe any form of relativism, so let's just be nihilist or nihilist. Now, some philosophical naturalists or scientific atheists, like Hillary Putnam, have moved towards relativism with regards to ethics and meaning. So these guys are like, yeah. You know, scientific atheism is true. Humans are just meat machines, but we'll just, we'll be relativists. That's better than nothing. So, yeah, we'll either ground ethics in a culture, the majority of people, what they believe in a culture, for whatever irrational reason, we'll go that route, or subjectivism. We'll ground it in what individuals believe. Go that route. All right. So, what are some arguments for relativism? You have some worldview considerations, like we've said. If you are convinced there is no God and there is no non-physical reality, if you believe, yes, everything is just made of matter and energy in the universe and there are only physical properties, you're not going to believe in weird non-physical properties like rightness and wrongness, good and evil. These things are just useful fictions that humans talk about, but they don't describe anything in reality. Okay? So... That might be one thing. Or you might be convinced of some of these other arguments. You might believe in God or in a non-physical reality, but you might think that um, for one of these few reasons that uh, morality is relative. First argument, you know what? It's just really hard to know what to do in a situation. So we have maybe a moral rule, don't steal. But guess what? Maybe it's not good for me to, right now to walk to King Supers, which is Denver's Kroger's, and steal a bottle of water. 
or steer, steal a body of baby formula for my uh, year and a half year old uh, nephew. Um, but maybe in 2007, in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, you can walk into a King Supers if nobody's there and steal a bottle of water or steal a bottle, bottle of baby formula if that kid's going to, you know, suffer. So, you know what? Do not steal is not really an absolute rule, okay? So it seems like, well, we can qualify a lot of our moral rules and principles. They apply in some situations, not others. So you know what? The heck with it. Forget all moral rules. How do we? How do we even? There's no universal moral rules to follow, or character traits. All right. Second one is the cultural differences argument. You know what? People here in Denver they believe such and such. People in Cincinnati believe such and such. City people believe this. What's right or wrong? Um, most people in New York City don't get married. But uh, maybe most people in Indiana, they get married, uh, that type of thing. Um, you know what? Uh, France um, just voted a couple weeks ago to uh, legalize uh, gay marriage. You know, but uh, in Iran, they don't believe gay marriage should be legal. So you know what? Who's to say? FLDS people in the other couple states away, they believe in plural marriage. You know, uh, some uh, places in Africa believe in plural marriage. We believe mostly in the U.S., one man, one woman. So who are we to tell those people what to do, okay? Maybe another culture believes they can marry animals, whatever. Who are we to tell anybody else what they, what's right or wrong? So, because of the diversity of moral views, people conclude, you know what, ethics is just relative. Let's just leave it up to culture to decide. All right. Okay. Um, I hope you guys can hear me. All right. Let's go to some critiques of conventionalism, which is the view of relativism, moral relativism, that moral rules should be decided by a majority of people in a culture. Okay. For whatever irrational reason. Um, we can give over 15 problems. I'll focus on some of the big ones. All right. The moral reformer's dilemma. If conventionalism is true, then anybody who tries to change the morality in a culture is unethical. Because guess what decides morality? 51% of the people. So, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, when he was arguing against Nazi Germany, the principles of Nazi Germany, he was unethical to uh, do what he did and try to go against the Nazi regime. All right? And remember, the Nazi regime committed the Holocaust. They killed 9 million Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, political prisoners, and uh, foreigners. All right. That's a big one. We have to say that Martin Luther King Jr., who fought against segregation in the South, he was unethical. We have to say that William Wilberforce, the major abolitionist in Britain, he was unethical to try to stop the slave trade. If the majority of people in Britain believed that, uh, you know, slavery should be legal and moral. Um, I'm just saying. Oh, Benjamin Rush, one of our American abolitionists, he is immoral for trying to go against um, what the majority of Americans believe that slavery should Slavery should be legitimate and moral. All right. Jesus, who fought for women's rights in the first century and the oppression of the Pharisees. Remember the Pharisees, religious leaders, they, they made long lists of rules, made everybody follow them. They tried to act cool. And uh, Jesus is like, no, 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 no. What are you guys doing? you got to worry about it. the inside of the heart. And uh, it's not about rule following. Jesus was the perfect blend of grace and truth. And so he was a big guy. He talked to women. If you remember, uh, Book of John, and so on. So the Buddha, who tried to get rid of the caste system in uh, India, these guys were all unethical since they went against the grain. Now, that's something, if you're going to go the relativistic route, you have to eat that and be willing to accept that. Yeah, 
Yeah, Jesus was unethical. Wow, Buddha was unethical. Yeah, William Wilberforce, Benjamin Rush are unethical. So that's one of the main reasons why I'm not a relativist. I can't. I'm sticking behind Martin Luther King Jr. I'm sticking behind Jesus and the Buddha and Benjamin Rush and William Wilberforce. All right. All right. Secondly, moral reformers dilemma. And then let's go to the presence of one universal moral truth. Now, this doesn't, this doesn't mean that everybody has to believe it. It means you as a philosopher can judge that the whole world is crazy if they believe differently. So for me, I took care of my niece um, one or two days a week for two and a half years since she was three months old. And I learned in my guts that to hurt her or to harm her intentionally is absolutely wrong. So for anybody to torture or sexually abuse a small child for fun or for self-gratification is wrong. I don't care what culture we're in. This little girl should not be abused or hurt, whether we're in Russia, whether we're in Antarctica. Uh, 200 years ago, 5,000 years ago, I don't care. No matter what culture, no matter what time period, no matter what planet, even if she's on Tatooine or Cybertron or Vulcan, this moral principle applies all over the universe. My niece and all children of her age should not be sexually abused, should not be hurt. Or tortured for fun. I know that. I know I don't care if there's no government and it's chaos. I know that that's true. So I'm a moral realist, a moral objectivist. I know that. I don't care if you guys don't believe me. I just think you're crazy. So does that make sense? A lot of people don't, a lot of students won't get that. That they think that it has to be accepted by everybody. No, you can just say that all Nazis are crazy. Say the Nazis brainwashed the whole world and they kill every Jew and every homosexual and every gypsy and every communist. I think, no, it's absolutely wrong to kill people for being Jewish, for being homosexual, for being communist, or what have you. Okay? So, if you can come up with one moral rule, it just, it just takes one moral character virtue, if you think people should be courageous or loving, um, honest, whatever, or find one thing. Like some people say, uh, yeah, genocide on the basis of race or religion is just wrong, or yeah, torturing babies for fun. I mean, sex trafficking, I think that's a big one. I mean, that stuff, and sexual abuse, it's not pleasant to talk about, but you know what? I think we know in our guts it's wrong. You know, rape is just absolutely wrong and so yeah it's, it's an easy one to say across the board I don't care what planet you're on and this is where this is why science fiction works that's why Star Wars Star Trek all this stuff works is because we take our moral moral principles and they even apply to, to some different species if they're intelligent things like that that's why we hate betrayal when Anakin Skywalker betrayed you know the Jedi Order and killed younglings you don't kill younglings with a lifesaver. All right? Just don't do it. Ain't I kidding? All right. So that's two down. More reformers dilemma. Presence of one universal moral truth, moral rule, character trait. Uh, thirdly, um, what should we do? Uh, the problem of subgroups. This one's simple. It's just, you know, where do we define the boundary of a culture? Is it the USA? Is it North America? You know, is it Canada, US, Mexico? Is it Northern Hemisphere? Is it Europe? Wait a minute, maybe it's states. Maybe we should just take a poll in Ohio or Colorado. But you know what? What if I'm out here in Colorado and I have a lot of land and my family lives on my land? Don't, doesn't my family of 35 people make their own culture? You know, can't we just make up our own moral rules? So it's really hard to define the culture. Also, what about borders disputes? What do you do when you have, let's say, three cultures meet at one place in some hotel? One culture is an adultery culture. One culture is a, a monogamous, faithful culture. And one culture says, well, we do whatever the other people want to do. What, what moral code do you follow when, you're, when they're at that hotel on the border of those three cultures? 
just seems weird and counterintuitive that and culture just seems too amorphous and vague to define something like that. All right. Um, um, also, a big one for me is that moral debate becomes meaningless. And that this whole class becomes a joke. Okay? It's just an exercise and, and whatever. Okay? Because if cultures decide things, then we just vote. To argue, to try to find the truth of some matter, whether or not abortion is wrong, or same-sex marriage is right, or alternative marriage, incestuous, whatever, is okay. You're at, people use, are arguing with universal principles of fairness or right and wrong and these kind of things, but you're assuming that there's a real right and wrong that we're trying to discover, we're trying to debate. If conventionalism is true or subjectivism, individual relativism is true, there is no such thing as moral debate. It's just we just vote. And it doesn't matter how irrational a culture is, a vote does it. So even if everybody drank 6,000 Dr. Peppers and a sugar high made them believe that, uh, uh, that, yes, plural marriage is moral, and we vote, then it is moral, just because of what people believe. It doesn't matter how they got their beliefs at all. So Nazi culture, if 51% of Germans believe it was right to kill Jews, gypsies, homosexuals. It's right. Those people, it's moral to kill them. For me, that's really hard to eat. I think moral debate, and the rest of this class, when we debate, debate all these moral issues, we're trying to see what are the moral principles that all of us believe from different worldviews and see how to apply these to a case to see what's right or wrong or what's morally permissible. Maybe there's different options. So. That's a big one for me. Moral debate becomes meaningless. Moral reformist dilemma. Um, yeah, I, for me, I can't tell you, I can't say Jesus was immoral. I can't say Martin Luther King Jr. was immoral. I can't be a relativist because of that. Secondly, I cannot say that if a culture believes that, you know, sexual abuse is okay or, or child sex trafficking is okay, I think that culture is crazy and just wrong. So, and I'm going to go to my death fighting for my niece or my nephews or whatever to protect it. Things like that. Okay. Um, let's stop there with those four. So, moral reformers dilemma. The problem of subgroups. It's hard to. Culture just seems vague, and philosophers want something more solid than just a poll vote. Um, the presence of one universal moral truth. And ethical debate is meaningless. Um, there's a bunch more, and uh, but if you read my document by Hammonds, I'll list a bunch more and argue for those. Check them out. But uh, this is already almost 20 minutes long right now. Okay, guys, email me your questions, complaints, and we'll see you later. Today is my mom's birthday. It is. June 11, 2013, go Redlegs.